welcome back and to all my new viewers welcome to this channel and today i'm going to teach you guys what navigation lights signify on airplanes and how you can make your own lights for your rc airplane so first let's learn what all the lights signify most airplanes have two types of lights ones which are constantly on and ones that flash known as strobe lights there are typically five strobe lights and three constant lights and some option lights and this number may change depending on a plane First up on the left or port side wing is a constant red light and on the right or starboard wing is a green light and towards the tail is a white light. These are known as position or navigation lights which signify the left and right wing and the rear of the airplane to oncoming traffic. Other constant lights include landing lights which help the pilot see the runway during takeoff and landing as well as logo lights which illuminate the airplane's logo on the vertical stabilizer. Now going into flashlights, there are white strobe lights on each side of the wing and the tail. On the top and bottom of the fuselage, there are two red strobe lights, which alert the ground staff that the engine is on. That is the basic nav light system on an airplane. And now is the perfect time to subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to reach 500 subscribers and I would really appreciate your help. So with the basic idea of what nav lights mean, we're going to make a simple circuit. So first, let's talk parts. First, you'll need a set of resistors. Uh, I recommend buying a resistor set as you can test the circuit with different values of resistance. You'll also need a diode, a 10 microfarad capacitor, an LED, and most importantly, a 5-5 timer IC, that is the brain of the circuit, as well as some wires or jumper cables. To make the circuit, we first need to understand the circuit connections. So before we solder it on a PCB, we're going to connect the circuit on a breadboard. So on a breadboard, in the middle sections, all the columns are connected, and these are called the terminal strips. And on the outer sections, all the rows are connected and these are called the bus strips. So with that in mind, let's connect the circuit. First, we're going to take the 5-5 timer IC and connect it in a way in which the small notch is facing towards your left hand side. This is an 8 pin IC in which the pins are numbered 1 to 8 from the bottom. In this IC, pin number 1 is ground and pin number 8 is your VCC or voltage input. That's pretty much all you need to know about this IC for this circuit. Next, take some wire and connect pin number 1, that is your ground, to the bus strip. So that's going to be your ground input. Then um, we're going to take another wire and connect pin numbers 4 and 8 on the IC. Similarly, take one more wire and connect pin numbers 2 and 6. With that done, we're going to start um, connecting the components. So the first component is a diode. So in this circuit, the diode prevents the IC from burning when reverse polarized meaning when the battery is connected incorrectly. The diode does this by acting as an open switch during reverse polarization. So you should connect the cathode um, that is signified um, by a white strip to pin number 8 while the other end goes to the bus strip on the breadboard. Then take your 10 microfarad capacitor and connect the positive terminal to pin number 2 and the negative to the bus strip. Now we're going to take the resistors. These resistors determine the blink characteristics of the LED. I'll go in depth about that after we finish the connections. So the first resistor R1 is going to be a high value resistance. Here we're going to use a 222 kilo ohm and connect that to pin number 8 and 7 on the terminal strips. The next resistor R2 is a 10 kilo ohm mid value resistor and connect that to pin number 7 and 6. Resistor R3, the lowest is a 100 E resistance and connect that to pin number 3 and to another column on the terminal strip. Then take an LED and connect the positive terminal to the bus strip and the negative to the resistor end. Connect your power supply. It can be anywhere from 5 to 12 volts. And there it is, the light blinks. But we're also going to add a constant light. For that, take uh, another 100E resistor and connect that from pin 1 to another LED in a similar way. Now let's talk about the resistors. So resistor R1 determines the time duration between two successive blinks or highs in electronic terms. So increasing the resistance will increase the, that time duration. While resistor R2 determines the time duration that the LED remains on during blink, that is how long the LED will glow. And resistor R3 only varies the brightness of the LED. So I experimented with a few combinations and I found out that the most similar to a real airplane is when R1 is at 333 kilo ohms, R2 is 10 kilo ohms and R3 is 100E. This is just my preference. If you like it faster, you can change it just as I have mentioned earlier. 
So that's the end of part one in which we've learned the navigation light system and understood the circuit and basically prototyped it. So in the next part, we're going to take this prototype circuit, throw it on a PCB board and solder the components. Then we're going to connect it to a receiver and test it on an airplane. So click here to watch the next part. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment if you have any doubts and I will answer them. Thank you for all your support. Until next time. Bye-bye.